against. So we saw Fnatic with the Zac with the Gangplank. Aphelios is not that mobile, but maybe Limit, you know, we're talking about exciting picks. Maybe he's going to pick up Tom Coco. Why not? <laughs> It's not exciting. I don't. You, <laughs> I know it's your first day, but that's the exact. <laughs> that's the exact opposite. You know, that's not what we don't want to see. But you said it, and it feels like Shaka taking a page out of the Fnatic book here because it is immediately uh, the Gragas, immediately the misfortune. And if we see a GP to round it out, it'll be a carbon copy, I believe, of the first three from that Fnatic draft. And Crown Shot's really not going to get to play the game if these champions get off the ground. Okay, Pantheon flex. I like it. They're hovering the mode. Oh, there's the GP. Good takeaway. I like it. Because honestly, if you let Schalke take GP here, Aphelios is not going to play the game. So I like the takeaway. Aphelios, obviously. The thing that I like now is that they also have some dive on the side of SK Gaming and Misfortune. Not not the same as Aphelios. Obviously, you got to just kind of get a push R and back away. It's not going to be a big deal here, but it does limit the effectiveness there. And Schalke now probably expecting to get their hands Aatrox. on the GP. Oh, no Aatrox. This would be interesting. Vladimir now locked in. That's new. Uh, obviously going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the likes of the GP. Now, how do you feel about Vladimir Yamano Cannon? Because to me, it's obviously that there's dream scenarios in late game where you get to one-shot an entire team, but it feels so hard to get there. I feel like it takes so much time, as you said. You know, the GP ult comes online so early on, and we have the early Drakes, the early Rift Heralds. But when we look at these two teams, if you are in a position where you can take a step back and you don't need to be proactive, you're probably at the advantage because these two teams aren't usually the most explosive ones, but it might change very, very fast. Scaling, always a solid option. Interesting that they're taking away Abadage's Casio, so limiting the comfort picks that he can bring to the table. Braum now the other option to try to make sure that Crown Shot is as vulnerable as possible on the bottom side. Maybe we see the Tom Kench banned. Maybe that's how deep we are into the defensive Oh, picks here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I guess Thresh is left. Thresh would be the pick to go for. Um, probably we'll see Schalke just picking Nautilus fourth, leaving last pick for mid lane. The tricky part here is about blind picking on blue side. Usually we see Azir, Oriana, but there are a lot of counters that teams can play. Maybe an Echo, maybe some AD champions, because right now Schalke is very, very AP heavy. And Yasuo is also an option. And Abadage we've seen, I'd say a mixed bag as far as performances go. Uh, we've seen from Solo Q, he can play the champion, he's got the mechanics. We've also seen that him and the enemy first tier tower are on a first name basis. <laughs> he likes to spend a lot of time there, which is not a good look when you're trying to carry a game on Yasuo. It's also a lot easier because this Pantheon is a blue side pick, so we're going to uh, see if he goes to jungle in the mid lane and then Shalk will have an easy time just locking in that mid lane pick. And as you said, just as predicted, Yamato, the Nautilus has now been locked in. Going to make it much more difficult to play that Aphelios, but Lemon will have the Thresh, offering a bit more protection, offering the Lantern as well. And now the final pick, the puzzle that you talked about, the blue side blind pick. What are they going to opt for here? So there's Elise as an option, but I don't like that too much. I'll just send Pantheon into the jungle and pick a Diana. Works. Yeah. All right, Gen X on another melee mid laner. We're pretty much set to have the GP versus Vladimir topside matchup. I want to see what Trick can get done. We saw aggressive Trick yesterday. It was a refreshing change of pace, but have to see if he can keep that pace up. Well, he needs to. With Pantheon, he scales a bit better than he used to, but uh, Pantheon means early action, early dives. Okay. The, the Abadaga like special. This. I mean, the Genex special on Abadaga, because Genex is the one that plays a lot of sets. I like it. It's a big confident pick, though, to pick it into someone who loves playing this champion so much, and the melee matchup is going to be very miserable, you have to imagine, for Genex here, at least in the early game. Very difficult to trade on to set, or really any of these juggernauts. Although they're taking their sweet time on the swaps back and forth. So in a case where there was no name tags, I would say right away, this is heavy on the 2v2 mid lane. You have the set and the Diana. It means a melee matchup, which is going to be very explosive. Both mid laners need to walk on that wave and then spread that pressure into that bottom side. Because as we see on bottom side, there's a lot of setup. We have Thresh, Nautilus. If these teams get to fight first and get there first as a 4v2, beautiful. And they can snowball from there. But Yamato, Diana in the jungle. Okay. Not something that I was necessarily prepared for. LCK special, I guess. Yeah, really mixing it up here, actually, on the side of SK Gaming. So we're going to have to keep an eye, because you said jungle 2v2, all important. Something that's easy for us to look out for, both Diane jungle. A bit of a wild card here. We wanted to see if teams were going to show us something new, something special that they might have cooked up from scrims. And there it is from the side of SK. They're still not picking Nunu, my friend. I'm sorry. You put so much effort into that outfit. <laughs> it's nice. It just hasn't happened. Maybe G2 Fnatic. I doubt it, though. But the man on your screen and the rest of the Shaka lineup looking to prove something as they go toe-to-toe -to -toe against SK Gaming in our first game of the day. Both lineups.
ready for a fight here. Something new in the jungle, something spicy. Gonna have to see how it plays out. So Diana is, I, th I assume this is the first Diana we saw. versus Schalke and that video. Now, Yamato, die in a jungle. Talk to me. What do you see? Honestly, it's the first one we've seen in the LEC. Saw some in the LCK. I don't like it too much, but it has been buffed on 10.4, so it definitely helps her clear speed. She scales pretty well, and I guess the big benefit from her rework is the fact that she has a dash already on level 3. So she makes more sense than she used to because you can actually gap close and fight. But if Diana gets ahead and she gets to snowball, the AP jungle item is very good to clear with and uh, you get to enjoy that privilege. You're going to win the 1v1 against the Bragas at almost any point in the game because of Conqueror. But the question for me is, is this the same kind of fast-paced early game champion that we can expect out of a Pantheon? Or are we expecting a much slower game now from Trick? Because I, I liked yesterday Trick. I want to see yesterday's Trick again here versus Schalke where he is a ganking mid lane at level three. He's making these big aggressive plays. It's just that in the context of the teams, I sincerely doubt it. I feel like as the privilege with Diana is that you can, in fact, do some full clears and be happy with it because you're not going to fall off like some of the other champions. I mentioned Elise earlier that would have put SK at risk of just falling off too early. But when I compare the two comp compositions, I feel like Schalke have a, a very easy time of dealing with any type of melee champions coming at them. You have the Vladimir, the Gragas E, the Set loves it when people run into him. And on SK's side, you have three melee champions. So SK needs to maneuver those team fights in a very unique way. And it will come down to that early game if they can actually use the Pantheon to snowball that Aphelios. For now, relatively even across the lane, still very, very early on. We have to keep an eye on individual matchups. Obviously, Odawamne and Sakurai in the top side, not necessarily where we expect to see the most action, as it's just GP Vlad, a Grass Pock traded for uh, a Hemo, or a rather a Transfusion there. Not a lot else will go down. The mid lane, though, Abadage definitely struggling here on the first few levels. Pantheon's definitely a beast early on. He can easily trade because he's a champion that functions without an ultimate, and Abadag is going to have a better time later. But the most OP part about uh, Set, the thing that most top laners complain about, because mid lane meta is not really there yet with Set, is that he has too much HP regen. He just has so much, and definitely on this patch, before the armor nerfs and the HP regen nerfs, this matchup becomes a lot easier. With the Dorian shield, okay. Pull back, level Punching. 3 coming in as well. Now for both sides, but... I mean, you said it. Abadage walks out of the lane, pops a pot, instantly back up to about 60% health. Can just ignore a lot of that Pantheon poke to push the wave in. Top lane, though, a bit of a different story as Odawamne is just going to get harassed here. I feel like we need at least 20% cooldown reduction before Vladimir really gets to play the game. This is just a phase where Pantheon and GP need to build uh, a snowball. The key thing to mention here with GP and Vladimir matchup is usually what you want to do if you want to win with GP, you need to go Mob Malmortus, you need to go Mercury, you need to get heavy MR, but you really can't because in that situation where set matches you, all of a sudden all of those items are kind of pointless and you need to be more careful with how you itemize. That means the lane assignments as we move further are going to be more and more important. Lorox will clear out the Scuttle Crab on the bottom side. Genex laying down a little bit of vision. I like what we're seeing from SK so far. Priority in two out of the three lanes. Only bot lane really getting pushed in here by Dreams and NX. But it looks like Crownshot and Lemon may be able to hold the freeze. Not quite perfectly. But already now set up quite well. And now, if we're asking Trick to be more aggressive to get something done in the early game, and now I'm looking at Lorox as well. He's back. He's got the Predator boots. Where does this guy actually want to go? Because there's setup in mid lane. There's definitely setup in bot lane. Top lane's an island, as we've already said, but where is the first little bit of action going to come through on? I just hope, so, hope it comes down on bottom. We saw Misfortune doing that little cheater base where she just bases with uh, her passive jogs back with that... Uh, actually, she didn't base. I think she should have. I think it was a mistake. Definitely go for that base there, get that double longsword and enjoy. Have a bit of an advantage before the Aphelios BF and... Uh, these are the intricate details of usually Aphelios Misfortune matchup. You need to get ahead somehow. Because for now, you can see, I mean, suffering in CS, so... May have had an opportunity to get a few more items under his belt, but for now it's just going to get pushed in here. Do their best to catch the wave. Abadage burning all of his cooldowns. Trick just now walking to mid lane. Has killed the scuttle grab. Lorox is here as well. Of course, Trick with the red buff versus the blue buff on Gragas. More combat stats for Trick, but this just seems like the handshake. Both sides backing off the mid lane. Abadage is going to retreat. Landing stats relatively even, but 
Crown Shot, we've said it before, one of the stronger points on this SK lineup is uh, winning in CS right now. They're winning in pressure on the bottom side, and he's going to back and get that Boots 2 rather than the BF sword here, it looks like, just to stop himself from getting all in. It's going to be tricky because maybe Misfortune is going to have enough gold for the BF sword, and that can shift something like an early Drake, the early Rift Herald swap on that GP old timer. Uh, I think it's going to be... Honestly, is it? Is it? Oh, oh, oh. 1,200? Just 100 off? Almost, okay. So we might get a pickaxe, so not the end of the world. Could okay. also opt for boots too, although Misfortune with the W basically free Mobies, so no real reason to commit the resources that early on. And at this stage of the game, I think if you're... Both these sides are just content. I think we're just waiting for level 6. I feel like that Pantheon ult, uh, GP ult timer is going to be a very key one, because if they don't use that at all, I feel like Shalke's comp just outscales uh, across the board. Maybe Aphelios has some opportunities there, but I think it all comes down to that big dive, the big play on the bottom side. Yeah, if you told me in a late-game teamfight I can have a GP ult or a Vladimir ult, I would probably, probably take the Vladimir every time. Early yeah. mid-game, though, GP ult is so oppressive, and especially once Diana gets level 6 and the setup is just there, it's so simple. But for now... We talked about teams playing for their life, and I feel like they're taking us a little too seriously, Yamato. They're not taking any risks <laughs> here. There's no, no one wants to do anything that could get them caught out or killed. I have a wave stacking. Diana's on bottom side. Pantheon can posture into bottom. Maybe we'll see a dive. This is a good time to do it. Gragas not in position. We have a set TP lined up, but uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. Taking the sweet time. Won't count against them too much. Lorox now moving in on the bottom side. It's just going to be able to clear out a little vision. All of the incredible amount of defensive vision here for Shaka is crazy to me. Just looking on that bottom side, red side jungle. Yeah, that's, that is a lot committed just to make sure that your bot lane does not get dove. The Gen X is forced to use an ultimate here. If but, I was a betting man every time, I would just choose the team that requires less proactivity in such a matchup. And so Shaka? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Oof. Then the question becomes, how long, Yamada? <laughs> how long? I mean, it's seven minutes into the game, but when, it was, when is Shalka? Because at level six, we talked about it. You got Pantheon ult to be scared of. That Gen X already level seven. Sakura level seven. We're waiting now for these ultis to come down somewhere. But if you're on the side of Shalka, what are you waiting for? You scaling? Is it Gragas level six that you need to get started? Or are you just kind of trying to play back and minimize the impact of this GP ult, of this Pantheon ult? Or just GP with the wave. <laughs> My goodness. What about this smurfing? Because that's, that's a key ability right there, and that just saved them another three minutes. And... Uh, to wait about talking about key moments for Schalke. I think definitely whenever they reach two items. Oh! Flash in. Bit of a questionable flash ulti there from Trick. Uh, I think had the timing on Eing in, but did not respect Abadage's ability to just flash away from that one. So a bit of a small fumble. And that is going to be two major ultimates burned now, along with Trick's flash here on the side of SK. So. We said Shalka want to sit back. They're going to be very set up to do so for at least the next few minutes. Really only Inax the one to suffer as Crown Shot gets the wave first and Inax is just starting to fall further and further behind against the Cephelios. I think always if Shalke are playing a good defensive game, they ward up, they play safe, they rotate the right way to make the defensive play. It's very important that SK actually take those objectives. The Cloud Drake on bottom side wasn't taken. That is going to slow down SK in the mid to late game in order to reach that point where they get that soul. Because usually when you see a Cloud Drake, you get happy because that increases the odds of the Infernal, increases the odds of the Ocean Drake as well. But now the Cloud Drake is still alive and Rift Herald is the next play. I hope SK do something aggressive for this one. Also, ultimate cooldown reduction, not bad to have on this team. If it's ultimate cooldown reduction into Infernal, that's essentially a dream for this composition, for this lineup. The GP, the Pantheon, would love to have a lot more uptime on the global and semi-global, respectively. But for now, it's really just a vision dance. Going back and forth, laying down a few wards here in the jungle limit, trying to make sure that they are set up for safety here on the top side. I want to highlight Pantheon's item choice as well, with the mobility and the serrated Dirk. This is not items that you build in order to win the matchup, because now Abadag is going to begin to win these trades, because he has that cloth armor, count counters the serrated Dirk easily. It's all about that roaming. He needs to be doing things like this. Move into top side. Go, 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 ult. Go there. Action. <laughs> he can't hear you. I know, yeah. I, it's the first day, I know, but he can't hear you. I just gotta let you know. Because I've been there, trust me. Sometimes you shout at him, you're like, FIGHT! And they don't do it. Honestly, when you're on the other side of the coach as well, you just shout at the screen. <laughs> Partially to strike fair into the other I'm, coaches, because you can be loud enough. 
<laughs> I'm looking for the forward to the play-by-play -play breakdowns so when we get to like 25-minute Baron rushes and the coach cam comes up on screen and you're like, I don't want to talk about the Baron. I want to talk about the expression on Dylan, Dylan Falco's face right now. <laughs> I know that one. He's thinking right now, what are they doing? For sure. <laughs> Sometimes even worse because you get to hear the players as well. <laughs> oh no, so you know what they're doing. There's the pull in. That's going to be a clean combo, but Abadaga gets the shield out. That's going to be the oh. Haymaker first blood coming in. Genex going to make it out to safety, courtesy of the Lancer in there. But won't be able to grab much else. Solid start to Shalker. They're going to move right up to this Rift Herald if they want to. So SK found the, the weak link, so to speak. Abadaga no flash, but this was a moment where Shalker had full prior on top side. Misfortune Nautilus with that Moby Boots. Uh, went into mid lane. It was a 4v3 simple pickup for Shock, and they're going to be very happy. This is going to delay SK Snowball big time, and all of a sudden, this game is starting to look more and more grim for SK. Good news is Apelius is still doing relatively all right, but obviously the gold difference just about dead even. The Herald will start to swing things in the favor of Shock when they do finally use it. But now SK looking to contest here. This is bold. They don't have a smite in the area, but they want to take the fight anyway. This is definitely not the fight that they're looking to take, but now Pantheon Ultimate is on the way in. Maybe they can get things kicked off. GP Alt is there as well. All of Shalka now on the retreat. Dream's getting taken down. Abadage next on the list. Clean fight initiation from SK, punishing Shalka for committing to that one. I love that SK went for that. They had to. If they gave up the refill for free, they're going to walk away with too much of an advantage. At least two pick up, two kills pick up, and also some waves being pushed in. Abadag is going to lose some seals in the mid lane as well. Uh, I like it. They need to keep forcing. They need to be in the mindset that we're getting outscaled this game. They need to be the ones that pull the trigger. You look back, and this play looks good at the start. The setup is there. It's perfect, but obviously once the... Uh, I don't think the hook actually connected there. No, I think it hit a creep or something. Oh, the big issue just was the, 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 the freaking priority there. And then the team fight here, Limit walked in to tank it up with the aftershock, managed to find the fight. Kind of weird Pantheon ult, because he was right there. <laughs> he could just walk in. You know, I think maybe he could save Limit to do something better if he just kind of went into the fight, but it looked cool. It looked, it looked really cool. cool. That's the perk of the Dragon Slayer skin, is that no matter what else happens, you look cool throwing that spear down and coming in. And, hmm. We're now at a point in the game where I like the adjustment on the itemization coming from Gen X. He's got the Phage. You mentioned it already. The lane phase matchup is not won by Lethality against yeah. the set. So we're seeing him swap over to what looks like a Black Cleaver. Extra 20% CDR when he finishes that one. Mashalka now, the ones on the hunt here. Sakre, the callout is there. I think they can get something done here. But maybe it's just the Drake instead is the focus because he's just walking away. Harold's going to get dropped with the Creep Wave a little bit far away. And it's just going to be a trade on both sides. Neither team going to find any kills. It's just going to be all about the objectives. Well, it's a good, good macro decision here, considering they have the Rift Herald. To just, uh, if they mismatch, the Rift Herald is going to do more damage and the tempo will always be in your favor. And more money into the pocket of Odawamne as well. Already at the 20% CDR and only to get harder to deal with him as we get further. That's also Soroff, as I mentioned before. GP not being able to buy MR convincingly is uh, going to be super awkward. Who got the first one? Vladimir did, right? Yeah. Okay. There you go. That was crazy advantage. for a moment. But, I just as a trade back and forth, once again, it's just a continuous uh, cycle for both these teams. But a 1k gold advantage building up for SK. Oh. We'll have to see if it's enough to keep them going. But that's going to be a big ult coming from Trick, trying to get the fight kicked off. And X is there as no well. Flash. Doesn't have, or doesn't want to commit his ult, rather. Dream's gonna be blocked out there, but now the fight's coming on. That's the dunk, that's the ulti as well. Trick has to run for the hills. The Haymaker will not connect. Something Abadage has overstayed. Oh! Commit here, snipes that one out. Genex faced the wrong way on that. No flash. Body slam goes forward. Ulti comes in from Crown Shot. That's the snare to escape. But Shalka getting another one back. Yeah, Trick was uh, out and about on the red buff there. Starts off in a tricky position. I thought he was just doomed here. But then it, he turned around on the Dreams. Dreams had no flash here. Everyone's collapsing. I liked it in the beginning. Shaka seemed to be walking away, but then they're calling. We can fight here. Predator boots on. You see Gragas is jogging across the whole map. Kind of ironic how he can be the one jogging with the Predator. And then the deadly combination here with the bullets and the RKO out of nowhere. I liked it. <laughs> I liked it. There you go. Snipe going down. And really at this stage, Crown Shot has no mana. And SK, I'm just going to guess in the comms are going, Trick, why? Why are we there? <laughs> like, what, what was that really ultimately worth? for the team. Big commitment. Good news is Trick is still very much in this game. He's got a CS lead for himself. He's on his way to his proto belt. That is going to be one scary Diana, uh, but mostly for the likes of NX at this stage. Everyone else on the team quite tanky. 
that's such a tricky game to maneuver yourself as a Diana. You want to look to snipe someone, right? You want to look for those weak targets. But now, you want to need to get through a Gragas, a Nautilus. There's just too much CC to get through. And itemization is so awkward. Oh, the Wamne. Had flash. Run could, could have down. went. He's going to use his ultimate there. It's not going to be the biggest loss because he's not really looking to team fight at this stage. But surprised he didn't commit completely to the all-in. Looks like they did not know where Trick was. So good patience, I suppose, to back off. But doesn't get the GP ult, doesn't get the flash. So definitely not ideal. I think he could have killed on the stick because he has Nimbus Cloak as well. He flashes, gets the move speed, matches the flash as well, and can walk after him and E to slow. I think uh, this is the time to go for it. We sp spoke about the stakes earlier on. Uh, go for the 1v1 kills. Those are the ones that people are going to remember walking away from this game. Maybe Oda one wants to go for the dive now. Can't commit the pool, obviously, back up, but very difficult to do. Between the grass proc as well as the oranges, have to 100% commit to the all-in. The short trade is always going to favor that sustain on GP. Pachalka just kind of responding. Outside of Oda Wamne, who's very uh, quickly starting to win this lane on the top side, the rest of Pachalka kind of just forced to play back, play a bit more safe, wait for Oda Wamne just to get a bit more under his belt. Now has the Sork Shoes coming out as well. I think the key thing now as we're transitioning into the mid game, uh, Schalke definitely have the stronger side lanes. Pantheon is going to lose, GP is going to lose. They can't itemize armor, can't itemize MR. So Vladimir set very happy. In the mid lane, that's where SK need to strike. Use that outnumber, use that GP ult on that MF. Start to burn some summoners because they need to force hard. Because if they give up mid prior as well, they're going to be in trouble. The limits here. You can see Diana coming over as well. Trick might just be focused on that Raptor camp. You have to wonder if he's going to pitch for the play as well. For now, we're chilling. Yamato, we're waiting. Yeah. Bring up a chair. You can. We you don't get we, we get chairs as casters. No, or no? I, I, I always stand. I always stand. Play by play caster. Yeah, because I can't. It's hard to yell sitting down. Like That's name true. name a great moment of anyone yelling in history where they were sitting down to yell. I could just think of like some <laughs> some oh oh flash hook. We wanted it and there it is. Dreams now getting the fight kicked off. Crown shot laying down the turret trying to zone in axe away, but not enough damage oh. to stop. Limit just getting bopped in these exchanges. Pantheon now coming in, but right into the waiting arms of uh -oh. SK. Suplex back, leaps in on the NX, NX flashing out on the safety. Shield now falls away. The hook now comes in, and that's going to be it. Shalka ace that fight three to six and kill. So it was the big play around mid lane, but uh, a bit of an awkward timing because everyone was in position. The waves crashed on top side, and you can see the waves are bouncing, and they just went for the mid play at a very, very strange time because everyone had prior. So it was the right play, but the moment was off. Because once again, it's the same thing as before. Schalke walking into mid lane. Lurox and Abadag at the top side of the map. Then Limit gets caught here, tries to fish for a pink ward, doesn't land the hook. I guess he just didn't want me to sit down. This is them wanting us to stand up. <laughs> just starting the fight there. Good Gragas Barrel. Then Pantheon just way too late to the party. Gets RKO'd and uh, tries to finish someone up. But just can't pull through. And at this stage of the game, not a mistake you can keep afford uh, you can afford to keep making. Trick. Buddy. There you go, he got it. Good job. One nice. step at a time. One step at a time. Yes, yes. Celebrate the little victories. Sometimes you get to, you know, go for the pentakill. Sometimes you just gotta be happy with picking up a Rift Herald. We're gonna keep the camera on trick. We just gotta make sure now we got that everything he does, we're clapping for it. He back. Yes, yes. Woo. One more time. <laughs> Thank you, Broly. Uh, now obviously, Protobelt's completed. This is a very scary Diana. I the problem continues to be when can Trick actually find somebody to one-shot? It's just no matter how how insanely fed he gets, there is still so much CC he needs to get through. Because he needs, he needs to get through Set, Gragas, Nautilus. If those three players are kind of gone and like picking mushrooms in the jungle or something and Misfortune is all by herself, then maybe, maybe they can find some pickups. But maybe with the GP, Panty and Diana, some combination to one-shot MF, that could be a way in uh, to win a fight. But uh, very unlikely, honestly, very unlikely. But I think Trick sees his opportunity, Yamato. Eye of the because, Tiger. Because the team, they're in the jungle. They're running through the lanes, maybe picking mushrooms, I don't know. But Trick now sees his opportunity to snipe, or his opportunity to catch Rift Herald, as SK just want to get pressure here in the mid lane. And this is their advantage. <laughs> we may have started the wrong kind of meme with the clap for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Trick! <laughs> uh, thank you, Bruin.
But the gold's still dead even. It's still two drakes. So much has happened, but so little has happened. Your motto? That is a... That's a painting right there. Salvador Dali or something. <laughs> Name of a painting. So much has happened, but so little has happened. Yes. Yeah, it's a bit like a Jaden Smith tweet, isn't it? It's a little bit <laughs> too early, 2010. Is this game real? <laughs> is this, how can this game be real if Trix Rift Herald isn't real? Yeah, where is it now? Nobody knows. 20 minutes. No one's taken Baron this game for a long time. Because Outer Tower is uh, very much still alive. Mid lane broken. Shaka not doing a lot with that pressure at the moment. Jokes aside, this Rift Herald on mid lane is, is very good because the mid tower being gone gives SK uh, the space to move further, to push further because they should have mid prior, especially with the Hurricane purchase. So maybe SK have more room to pressure into the sides because Pantheon is suffering, GP is suffering. Yeah, good news is, I mean, Sakura is mostly caught up, but as you can see, Death Cap is the, <laughs> the focus. Uh, <laughs> Vladimir, I'm kind of waiting now for Shaka to get this fight kicked off. Oh. Trick has been caught out. He has not found anyone alone by themselves. He is just going to get dumped down. If you're not the predator, you're the prey. So, Trick's learning that one the hard way. I just don't know what the crowd is cheering for anymore. Was it <laughs> Trick on the screen or Trick dying? Or just, I can't differentiate don't cheer, anymore. Don't cheer for that one. That one's, that one's BM. We don't... Even but, if, you know, it was untimely. Yeah. Now for Gen X, it's going to be a bit frustrating. Oh, has opted to go for the stun here, but that's limited a lot of the threat. They just got GP ultimate for free. Not going to cost them a whole lot as Abadag is going to tank another tower shot. We'll sidestep back to dodge the spear, I think. Maybe not the best option. Trick did respawn. Well, yeah. he's not wrong. That's true. Definitely not wrong. That's something to be proud of, to be fair. As long as you can still respawn, the game's not over. GP with the... <laughs> what happened? No, I was just... It's just a really weird... Car. We've ended up in a weird spot in this game. With, you, were about to say so, you were about to say something legitimate. And then Trick was on the screen? Or... No, no, I was just <laughs> laughing about like the weird philosophical quotes we keep finding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what are you saying about GP? GP build? Yeah, GP build. I thought he was going for the more of Malmortius, which makes him... Who possibly win against the Vladimir itemizes the execution was calling, but now if Seth goes into GP, he has a very easy time. So I think this is the switch up that I want to see. Could also technically see it uh, just be the Essence Reaver has a bit of flexibility there. Yeah. Now, oh. four, one, and two for mid lane. You got a three, zero, four jungler and Odwamne who is yet to participate uh, in any kind of team play. But with Death Cap, I assume right around the corner as we check in real quick on the gold. Uh, yeah, he's good. He can get it anytime uh, he sees fit. But Dreams has now been caught out. That's going to be the follow-up over the wall. Is going to use the ultimate. Now the Gargoyle Stone Plate as well. That is one tanky Nautilus. Just flashes out to safety. Nothing That's else going to get done there. It could have been a better moment. Still has time to go base in preparation for this Infernal Dragon. Schalke, Abadag with the push on top. He's going to be able to be in position now to go for that Drake fight. I think Schalke will be picking that up for free. The question is, do SK want to contest? Is this the moment where SK choose to force a fight? Now, you can think it's wrong, and that's fine. But I'm curious if they're finally going to put their resources together, because this has felt like a very disjointed game from SK. They were kind of the team that needed to be coordinated, that needed to make everything happen, and Shaka just feels like had been punishing them left and right for not being on the same page. So honestly, it's like, sure, this moment might not be the best to fight, but what are they really waiting for? At this point, the way they win fights is if Gangplank is going to smurf and like barrel and be like all Tobias Fate or Crown Shaw is going to activate his inner reckless and going to kill everybody or something like this. And that seems kind of far-fetched. I feel like Shaka is going to win fights always in this game. Ooh, pull back on the face breaker, not going to be there though. SK debating if they want to go in any further. But as we said, Gen X might fall off, but Crown Shot is only going to get scarier and scarier. Oh, Trick. Oh, man, that's not a good one oh. here for. Ulti comes in. Gen X is going to walk away. That was really bad. That was two really, really bad ultimates. Um, not a lot more to say than that. Terrible, honestly. Terrible. Oh, Ooh, but that one was pretty good. Limit oh. now caught out. Gargoyle Stone played a little bit too late, but might just be just enough to save him. Ticket oh. down. There's a long day. He's finally decided it's time to play uh, League of Legends as he already has the death cap. All the damage will be denied for the most part. Odawamne now fearless. He just runs face first in the SK lineup. Shalka still dead even in gold, but are going to start to pull ahead here as they break the mid lane tower. 
Yamato, what did we just witness? Honestly, I felt like they wanted to scare them away. It worked for a moment, and then Schalke kind of realized they just entered. And they just came back in. Uh, Limit was out of position. The barrel, we saw it, and uh, Schalke picked up a mid turret on top of that dragon. That's, that's positive, because usually the teams would just rush the Drake there, pick it up, not take that mid tower. They are grabbing as much as possible when they find those opportunities. So Schalke playing a patient game and uh, taking what they can. Yeah, and now they're moving up to Infernal Soul, the Drake that you wanted to see stop for a cloud on the way. And we look back on this play. Oof. Ooh. And the thing about any kind of delayed alt Yamato is that if you're waiting on Trick to flash over that wall <laughs> and he doesn't, you're going to look dumb. That's what's, that's just how it's going to be. So I, I feel bad for Gen X in this instance. That was uh, quite silly. At least Gen has got the plant. It looked like that was his mission. Odomna coming from behind here, they knew Odomna has prior and they kind of forgot about him and he came in here, threw his spells into the shield so Janak survives. Um, but yeah, SK need to pull a rabbit out of a hat at this point in time to, to do something. They need to find a kill on site, they need to outnumber, they need to sit in bushes, they need to wait, they need to force that mistake from Schalke because right now Schalke have played a very patient game. They've been allowed to do so and they're, they've reached a point where they're just stronger across the board. And sadly for SK, it's been a game of, I think, fair to say, unforced errors. Just a lot of individual mistakes in key moments and what could have been a more explosive early game kind of stalled out now as we're dead even in gold at 26 minutes. Drake's only continue to be more of a problem as we get later. Infernal Drake. It's not gonna stop, huh? It's never, we, we've created a monster. <laughs> But uh, Baron potentially going to be on the table shortly. You have so many strong uh, members on the Shocker lineup in terms of damage output. Not necessarily great at shredding through Baron, but a lot of sustain means they can take their time with it and not really have to worry about a fight coming into them. I think the key thing is that you want to contest uh, the space where Trick and Limit is hiding right now. Trash is uh, uh, forcing the arrows because Shalke want to face check. And when you control this space, that's the time we can force Nasher. But they need to get through a GP ult. It's not going to be as simple as just start doing it because if SK get access, all of a sudden they might have the dream fight they're looking for. Shaka could also just wait for the Drake, right? I mean, that's the thing is like we talked about it. And look, there's always some debate about how scaling is going to work out. GP obviously scales pretty well into the late game. Diana like will do a lot of damage. Aphelios. But I just feel like the ease of execution is on the side of Shaka. You said it earlier and we have to say it again. But Dreams, potentially overstaying the knockback there onto Trick. Definitely a difficult day for him, but here comes Pantheon. Maybe to save the day. Oh. Trick doing a lot of damage there on the follow-up. Finally getting something done, but does go down. In the meantime, Crouch not going to connect on the ult. Suddenly he finds himself in the midst of Odawamne. That's going to be a big problem. The Vladimir coming in. That's going to be the RKO. Maybe just enough as Odawamne can start to chase these kills down. Inax still alive. Abadage as well. It's going to be a two for three overall in favor of Schalke. I respect Crown Shot there flashing in, flashing forward, knowing that he needs to be the one finishing the key targets, because honestly, Pantheon and Diana don't have enough damage. Even with the GP ult coming down, Crown Shot needs to play aggressive there. Uh, also, I like the trick, took the decision to not take the lantern, he just went in, because even though we're talking about how strong Schalke is at this point in time, they managed to get away with the 3-2, and uh, these are the risks you need to take if you're SK. Absolutely the case. Now, however, it is 2k gold lead for Schalke. Odwamne continues to get scarier and scarier. Crown shot, uh, you know, has three items now. Maybe he can get something done in one of these team fights, but there's not really a ton of peel for him outside of the Thresh. Pretty much everyone on his team wants to be diving into that back line. And now Vladimir is just getting stronger. It's just so tricky because if you crown shot, you need to itemize MR, but you just can't. So if we take a look at this fight again, crown shot plays this very aggressively. You have the lantern waiting, and everyone's just thinking this is going to be a fight where everyone walks away. But instead, Drix jumps in, tries to find the fight. Crown shot is also on the aggressive end. Usually you see Aphelios in the back line, but he's the front line because he has to. In this case, if he doesn't commit with these assassins, then they're just going to lose the fight, which happened anyway, but this was the best chance that Crown Shot could take. Flashes out of the Vladimir ultimate, uh, plus E combo as well, I believe. So overall, making most of it, as you said, and you look at those damage output, it doesn't feel like SK are too far behind if they can execute on a fight properly. Just need to find more of these opportunities. Sadly for them, though, GP and Aphelios definitely their scaling damage options, but the Diana... Not really doing a whole lot. Trick with the pull. No back. flash. This might be the fight that they finally need. That's going to be a big Aphelios ult to follow. And X now has to run for his life. GP ult a little oh. bit misplaced, but the shutdown comes in. 
right when he matters most. Limit finds the hook, but it's Abadage and Odawamne versus the world. You have to be careful. There's the ult. There's the turn. There's the pullback on the face breaker. Odawamne trying to get something done, but nice. Abadage the last man standing. The oh. down means crowd shot's dead, and Abadage's got a keen way to get out of this one. Abadage still fighting, still fearless. The pullback. Haymaker goes in, but very close fight this time around, and finally SK are getting something done. Now they're stepping in, they're forcing the fights, going for those 5v5s, not waiting any longer. Misfortune, no flash. Trick found the engage, straight up went for it, and they deny the freaking soul. It's such a big deal. They live to fight another day. If they continue to fight like this, this game might turn into something spicier than what we've seen so far. More catches like that. And finally, a replay where it's not someone messing up. It's not a small mechanical error. It's just clean execution. Gen X now going to have a spell shield as well for himself. A bit more lethality. He's going to be more of a, a threat to the MF in these fights. We can see Trick one more time in this one. The dash. Love, love it. Because Cell was showing on the top side. He knows he has a window here where Seth needs a TP for four seconds. Pantheon comes in, finds the damage, Trick flashes out, and then the hook, the Trash double kill. You love to see it, right? In positions where you really need gold. Trash is getting the kills. Odamna gets zoned off, doesn't get that perfect combination because Trick gets away and Crown Shot also gets away from the Hemo Plague. But then Abadagi walks away and gets a very important kill because maybe if Crown Shot doesn't die there, it turns into an Infernal and on top of that a Nash, and then maybe all of a sudden SK have a game on their hands. Yeah, very solid fight overall. You can see Crown Shot, uh, or Inax rather, being deleted at the start of the fight. It means Crown Shot just kind of got to run through that one. Excellent use of the ultimate. I am worried, though, for SK and the fights to come. And not because of scaling, just because Vladimir now has the Zanya. So next time that fight goes through, Odo will live long enough to get the healing back from his ultimate. And that could be huge in terms of relative impact in the fight. Because it's still a 6-1-4 set. But Vladimir with three items. This is a very difficult game to play out if you're the side of SK. It's also the fact that they are so AD heavy, something that I didn't even think about. Diana's the only AP damage, and now when the armor is starting to build on Seth and on Vladimir and on Gragas, it's going to be more and more rough, because this Kr Crusher just needs seven items, eight items, to be able to deal with this whole team. He needs a Last Whisper, he needs a Mauve Malmortius to survive the Vladimir. When Vladimir finally has that flash, has a good flank, and he gets on top of him, you could also deal with it maybe with a freaking Solari. That's a good buy. Maybe with a Lantern. There is a lot of outplays that we need to see from SK still in order to win those fights. And I think the scariest part is that Crown Shot with items alone cannot match what Schalke are bringing to the table. That he's going to have to rely very heavily on Limit or someone else in the team to provide some sort of protection from him. Because he needs that last Whisper. He's going to need to shred through the armor present on the side of Schalke, but he also needs the life steam. And as you said, at the MR and everything else is to keep himself safe. And this is the difficult part of playing Aphelios in this meta. This is why we were concerned when it was first picked, when we saw the Gragas MF response that SK, we're going to get the Fnatic experience where your backline is just dove over and over. It's uh, interesting how the meta has developed because right now we saw two times the two of the best teams in, in, in the whole world, Fnatic and G2, giving up Aphelios and planning a strategy all around it. I'm curious as to how that's going to develop over the day because we have that big match at the end of the day as well. And see if he plays a part. How much of a shift. For now, the other pick that we were interested in, the Diana Jungle, I don't feel like we've really seen it do much this game, sadly, for the side of SK. Just kind of using it as an engage tool. It's uh, acting as a Zac, giving a bit of damage and so Pantheon can finish people off. Good ultimates. But yeah, I feel like usually when I run into Diana in a solo queue, it's very different, right? Because you get like five kills the first three minutes because your bot lane is ending. Diana, that it looks very different in solo queue. Yeah, too many, uh, the, the coin foot players of solo queue definitely take a lot of risks around Snowball Champions that they maybe should. Or I mean, going in for the one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Sakurai, though, trying to make his way out. Okay. Goes Golden Bites a bit more time. Pantheon now on the way. They're going to be able to pick off Odawamne. That's going to be one kill. That's going to be crucial. The healing is not going to come in in time. SK are going to get that one. Well played by Sakurai and SK. What else can they get done in the time that Odawamne is dead? That is a huge death timer. 50 seconds. I love the fact that SK kind of realized that Schalke is doing nothing. No pressure on Nasher. SK are the ones pressuring the midway. And as long as Schalke aren't posturing around the Nash area, Pantheon can do this freely every time. Has an ultimate, low cooldown now on level 16. They're forcing the Nash. Flash forward, the hook. Won't connect. 
Is this going to be a big throw? NX obviously has the ultimate available as well. There's no Braum on the opposite side to mitigate the damage on this one. Genix could look to come over the wall. Abadagi with the pullback. The hook's now going in. Dreams has been caught out, but definitely not the man that you want to hit. Big MF ball means the trick is already dead before the fight even gets kicked off. But there's Sakurai. There's the barrel. Unfortunately, the auto attack comes through. Denies the barrel activation. Sakurai definitely caught no oh. man. Abadagi absolutely unkillable, but two members is going to be enough. Shred it down. Crown shot with a crescendo. Just rips through that life bar. The kill will go to Sakurai in the end. And Shalka taking some risks here. They, yes, they deny the Baron. They might be able to get the Dragon Soul, though. SK need to be quick. No jungler alive. 3v4 situation, though. SK can walk up onto this. They have enough time to defend it, I believe. I don't think Shalka can kill it fast enough. Abadaga almost has TP, though. I think we're going to have a huge, huge fighter on this one. I need to all. wait for the players. Might be all or nothing, but as you said, Abadage's TP should be up in time. But will the dragon seconds. be dead? It can start to shred through this one. It looks like they're trying to focus it down. It's trying to burn through this as quick as possible, but it will be very difficult. If Trick, Trick is not in the area, will not have Smite to contest this one. They do have a lot of burst on their champions, though. Ground shot getting lower and lower. Lorox ultimate up and available. He's oh. just going to use it to throw back. Oh. Going in. Oh. 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 That's going to be Dragon Soul. Now Dreams is on the way in. Oduwame has the Infernal Soul and he's running into the back line. Abadage is going to cover the wall. Oh, no. That's now in no man's land, but this might just be a disaster. Oduwame is still living, still fighting. Limit running for the hills, but Abadage is there and waiting. And now he has to run this team down. Ground shot needs to get out. Flash forward from Abadage. The face breaker for the pullback. Dunks down with the oh. RKO. The shutdown coming out. Trick leaps in, but just to is dead. Shalka smashed the fight. Lurox making it happen. So the mini wave is quite far away, but the beautiful fight there. Lurox found the smite and then the infernal soul. I feel like besides the damage it does with the comets and all, it kind of a big motivator as well. As you see the sound in game, it's kind of scary and all. <laughs> Definitely the number one thought on their mind. Strike sure. fear into the heart of the enemy. And a well played fight by the side of Shalka. Disaster for SK. And we said you're playing for your lives. Shalka closing it out cleanly in the end to move up to 3 and 11. That was an interesting game. SK found some moments, found some fights. Shalke with patience, with the better draft, with the better composition, found themselves in a position where they actually fight as five. Odoana had a beautiful fight there around the dragon in the end. And uh, Shalke's patience uh, was the thing that uh, won them the game in the end. Very, very difficult game, though. I think. Overall, much more of a slugfest than I was expecting. I thought someone would take off, get running, but still very close all the way up until the end. But as you said, it's scaling. I mean, eventually the, the Vladimir is just going to kill your team. Couldn't get onto the back line. The pit definitely not the friend of SK in the end. For sure. Oh, it's such a difficult game to play Aphelios. I feel like that's the meta right now. Bait the enemy team to pick Aphelios, pick a lot of champions that do well into Aphelios. But still, Kranshoff managed to do so much in a position where he could do so little. Schalke, well, very well deserved win. Absolutely. Has to feel good. Even if you're out of playoffs contention, to just rack up those wins to get something done. Confidence booster, and as you said, proving themselves on stage. Of course, Twitter is the place, at LEC, Kia player of the game. You got Lorox, Abadage, or Inax. Let us know. Personally, personally, Abadage for me. Pretty big in those mid to late game fights, but also Lorox won the Smite War for the Infernal Dragon. I love those barrels. Those barrels, I mean the Gragas barrels, I just realized there's many barrels there's in the game. There's a lot of barrels. Gragas barrels were on point. Lorox was uh, hiding about with the Predator, um, throwing those barrels. I think the key thing for Schalke, for me, is that they've shown signs of improvement. You know, we saw the Rift Herald swap, the Temple play, and then we saw them take the mid turret on top of the Drake, when in most cases, people, some teams would just go for the Drake. They see the Drake, they see that they have two, they're going to go for that. They were squeezing some situations for more benefits, and uh, we can clearly see the Schalke, even though their position on the standings are rough, they managed to show some progress today. They absolutely do, and that's the most you can ask for when you're already knocked out of playoffs contention. But the pressure is on for Excel Esports, who are looking for a crucial win in the race for playoffs. Before that, Lord checks in with Inex, so be sure to stick around.